together and worship this morning. Uh, we have a wonderful joy of again gathering around God's Word. Uh, this time especially hearing what God has to say to us through 1 John. That when it's easy to feel overwhelmed by so much in our lives and in our world, we have a God who overcomes. And we have a God who is faithful in our lives. As we also join together, Happy Mother's Day! Also with you. <laughs> and so as we got together, we also be able to honor our moms and to be able to thank God for the wonderful example that they are and uh, for their service in our lives. Uh, we'll be using our bulletin to be able to guide our worship together today. Uh, for everybody joining us online, this is the bulletin we've had available in the tote outside the door seat. Uh, this bulletin is available right now on our website, newlinehugo.org. Uh, you can also be able to grab a copy of the bulletin and be covered for a dry and fruit communion today as well. So as we begin our time together, we start in sharing the peace of our God here in the bottom of page two. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We start in singing our opening song, Lord of all nations, grant me praise. God who is with us in our lives and the God who overcomes all the power of sin in this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Friends in Christ, as we begin this time of worship, we start by confessing our sins. We come to our wonderful God and we admit our need for his life-saving forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my sins to the Lord. And you forgive the people of my sin. We pause as we silently confess our sins to God. <clears throat> Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your present and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, by virtue of my office as a call and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
As we join in the uh, first three verses here from Psalm 98, uh, this is a great psalm for us to be able to use, even though it was written some 3,000 years ago. This psalm was really written with one purpose in mind, to praise God for all that he does. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm The Lord has made known his salvation and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all that is good. Help us to focus on what is right, and by your grace, live what is right in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In our epistle reading, we're continuing reading our way through 1 John. As the Apostle John was writing this letter to the Christians in the first century, continues this theme of love um, and how God is the one who overcomes the world for us. He even writes how Jesus is victorious in everything that he does, in the waters of his baptism, in the life that he lived, and even in the blood that he shed on the cross to save us. This is also in the text for today's message as well. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand out of respect for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Our Gospel reading picks up right where we had left off reading last week. At this point in time, Jesus is in the upper room uh, with his disciples. It's the night right before he goes to the cross to save us. And he's just finished talking about the importance of staying connected to him, how he is the vine and we are the branches. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory be to you, O Lord. And Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, and to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I do not, I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you, so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we join in singing the first verse 
of love divine, all loves excelling. I invite any children with us to be able to come on forward for the children's message. Well, good morning, you guys. So, in our Bible readings today, uh, in the sermon and in our prayers, like today in worship, we're talking about what it means to be overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. That's kind of a kind of a, a big way of saying of something that's something that's hard for us. Maybe maybe it's too tricky for us. It's too hard for us. It may be frustrating. Yeah. Right, yep, it could be hard to kick the ball in soccer, so you might, you might feel overwhelmed that it's too hard for you. Yeah, you could be overwhelmed if you're maybe really sad about something, or maybe it feels like something's not fair, like maybe somebody's picking on you or not being nice to you. But there's lots of different ways that we could feel overwhelmed. And do you know who knows exactly what we're going through? Who do you guess it is? It's God. Yeah, Jesus knows exactly what we're going through. Jesus knows exactly what it's like to have things be hard. He knows exactly what it's like to be sad. He knows exactly what it's like to, have, to feel picked on or when people are not nice to him. Like, Jesus knows exactly what we're going through. Except Jesus is big enough and he's strong enough to be able to be there for us no matter what, every single day. We can always pray to him. We can talk to him. That, he is, that Jesus is not overwhelmed by anything. And we, go to the playground. and we can go to the playground and we can have fun. Yes, and we can go outside and we can have fun and we can know that Jesus is there for us no matter what, every single day. In fact, that's so good. We also... We can, we can, and it'll be lots of fun. And so, before we pray, I also want to say that today is also another special day. Mother's day. It's Mother's Day. I am so glad you knew that. And so, because today is uh, Mother's Day, we're also going to have a, a special project for you guys. One, make sure that you say Happy Mother's Day to your moms. And also, two, is during the last song... Good, that's very good to say Happy Mother's Day to her. So then during the last song today, you guys can come out. We gave our gifts. That's very nice. So during the last song today, you guys can uh, come out of the sanctuary with me. And I, uh, during the last song, I'll meet you out here in the narthex in the back here. And we've got some flowers that we're going to give to all the ladies in our church family today to wish them a happy Mother's Day and just to, and to be able to honor them and to take care of them. So during the last song today, I can meet you out here and we'll have some flowers that we'll be able to give out to all the ladies. Yes, you can even give it to your sisters. We'll give it to all the ladies in the congregation. Well, she can get some more flowers. I'm sure she'd probably like another one. Yeah, absolutely. So, very exciting. So, how's this? Before you guys go back to your seats, let's pray. So, you're going to hold out those hands, wiggle those fingers. All right, up top, down into our laps. We'll fold our hands, close our eyes, and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you so much. 
for taking care of me. Please help me to trust you even when I'm having a hard time. Amen. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming on up here this morning. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our reading from 1 John takes us back to the end of the first century. It's now about 90 AD. Uh, for many people, they thought that the, the glory days of Christianity had happened a few decades ago. Uh, some of the older Christians around the Apostle John uh, may remember the, the good old days when it was much easier to be a Christian. Uh, they may finally remember the time when the church was not persecuted quite so bad. Because right now, it could be overwhelming to be a Christian. Laws were being passed which very explicitly went against God's plan and his word. And it seemed to be getting more and more popular in the culture to pick on Christians. The temptation to go against God's word was not just in the culture of the first century. It was also creeping into the church. Some Christians were preaching these untrue ideas as gospel truth. They were saying things like, It's your body. You can do whatever you want with it, so long as it makes you happy. Even some Christians were being told how a believing in their heart is all that mattered. You could use or change your body however you wanted. The, the physical did not really matter. And it was more what you felt inside or what you identified with that mattered. You could engage in any activity you want and you could love whoever or whatever you wanted so long as it made you feel good. Now some of these fancy terms that later became known for these ideas were Gnosticism and especially Serinthianism. And again, these ideas were not just out in the culture of the first century. They were creeping into the church. So let's fast forward nearly 2,000 years, come to the other side of the world, and come to 21st century America. Does any of this sound familiar? It should. History has a way of repeating itself. And we can definitely identify with those Christians John is writing to. And what did God say to them and to us today? Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. 
This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. It is impossible to separate our faith from our actions. If we believe something is true, it's inevitably reflected in how we act and how we talk and how we carry ourselves. And we're called to share this truth in the public arena because the beauty of God's plan for our lives is not limited just to us. This beautiful plan is for everyone at all times. And as we speak the truth and as we strive to keep his commands, we're not trying to be mean or old-fashioned. We're doing it in love because we genuinely want what is best for others. And the only reason we know what's best is because God tells us. But it's not always easy. In fact, I would say it's oftentimes difficult and hard to share our faith. As we see the culture and the people in our lives, we see hurt. We see people grasping at straws, uh, trying to uh, find something solid in life, trying to find something that gives their lives meaning. And as we face opposition in our lives, it can be overwhelming. So what did the Apostle John follow us up with? And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. God reassured the Christians of the first century that while it may seem overwhelming, God is the one who overcomes. God's design and his plans for people's lives is not burdensome. It's a reflection of God's love for us. God wants what is best for us. And he knows what's best for us because he's the one who made us. He is God. God knows exactly the overwhelming struggles of this world. In fact, he knows it so much. He did something about it. This is the good news for both the Christians of the first century and the good news we need today. God is the one who overcomes the world. And yet, he loves us enough to enter our world. That Jesus entered our overwhelming world. He became one of us. He firsthand experienced the forces opposed to God's plan for our lives. In fact, he firsthand experienced this opposition so much, it took him all the way to the cross. As we look at the cross, it sure seems like the world overwhelmed Jesus. With all the sin, all the darkness, all the persecution, all the hurt, all the pain of the world, all on Jesus' shoulders, it sure seems like the world won. And if Jesus was just a man, he would have easily been overwhelmed on the cross. So it's a good thing how he is not just a man. He's also God. He is the one who has the power to save us. Jesus was not overwhelmed on the cross. In fact, the cross is exactly God's plan to overcome the world. When we want to see the love of God, when we want to see how much he truly cares for us, we look to the cross. Because this is exactly God's plan to overcome the world for us. And when Jesus walked out of the grave on Easter morning, there was absolutely no doubt. He is the one who overcomes. He is the one who has the power to overcome all the sin of this world. This is especially good news for us because God's the one who gives us this victory. And he gives it to us through faith. Because Jesus is the one who overcomes the world, we are not overwhelmed. In fact, we get to stand tall for our faith. And we get to share God's love and his commands with others. And because God is there for us, 
He is the true overcomer. Recently, the Christian musician Toby Mac uh, released a new song. Uh, as a Christian living in 21st century America, uh, he knows the exact same overwhelming odds it seems like we are facing at times. In fact, he even recently experienced the, the overwhelming pain of having a child pass away. So the lyrics to this song are also printed on the back of the bulletin. Uh, if you'd like to be able to follow along as we hear Toby Max, help is on the way. As he's quoting the Psalms in this song, this is a wonderful reminder for us. Help is on the way. God is right there for us, and he is right there by our side every single step of the way. Maybe midnight, it may be midday. God is never early. He's never late. God takes care of us exactly right on time. He is the one who overcomes this world. As we stand on God's truth and as we share his love in our lives, God is right there. By his grace, he has our backs no matter what. And as we see others hurting and grasping at straws and trying to find meaning in life, we have a message of hope and meaning to be able to share with them because God's plan for us gives us true meaning in life. And even when we see the culture trying to creep into the church, God is still in control. The beauty of God's truth will always win out in the end. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. To God be all the glory. Amen. And may the peace of God, a peace which passes all of our understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, our faithful Savior. Amen. As we continue our time together, we join in confessing our Christian faith, uh, especially as we go here to the bottom of page 7. Uh, as we think of God's faithfulness through all the ups and all the downs, especially over the centuries in the history of God's people, there's been a few classic summaries of our Christian faith, a few classic ways to be able to summarize how God is the one who overcomes all the forces of this world, and he is faithful through it all. One of those ways that Christians have confessed this over the years has been right here in the words of the Apostles' Creed. So I ask you, Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, before we take some time to pray, uh, we've got a, a number of uh, announcements to be able to highlight with lots of things going on now. Uh, we've had our uh, table out from uh, uh, supporting uh, Compassion International. Uh, this will be the last uh, Sunday that we'll have it out, uh, so we'll have to be able to send uh, the remaining packets and stuff on in. Uh, if you've taken a packet uh, with a uh, child's name and information, and uh, if you've sent it on in, uh, please let uh, Kay Walfer to know uh, so that we can account for all the kiddos that we had and all the kids that we had out on the table so we know where they all are. As we join together for a Bible study, Bible study will go live on Zoom today and on YouTube at 11 o'clock. Uh, and we're going to answer some questions uh, after having a uh, Bible study on James and James being like the, uh, the half-brother of Jesus. And we had uh, some questions come up about, well, did Jesus have siblings? Did, did he, I mean, who, who was Jesus like related to? 
And what does the Bible say about that? And what does it mean for us today? Uh, so in Bible study today, we're going to dive into especially answering that question of, did Jesus have half-siblings? And what does the Bible say to us about that? Also, uh, then uh, this week, uh, we're going to have our women's Bible study uh, tomorrow night at 6.30, and then men's group will be meeting Tuesday at 6.30 as well. So they'll both be meeting at 6.30, not 7 o'clock uh, here this week. Uh, also, in honor of uh, Mother's Day, our, our men's group has gotten flowers. And uh, so as you, as you probably overheard, the kids are going to help hand out flowers. Uh, so on our way out of uh, worship today, I will be on, uh, back with the kids. Um, and we'll be handing out flowers to all the ladies of the congregation um, in, in honor of Mother's Day and in honor of all the ladies within our church family today. Uh, also in back uh, on the table, uh, off to uh, your right as you're heading out, uh, we've got a couple of books back there. Uh, we had mentioned them and made, started making them available at our April voters meeting, but we want to specifically announce it for anybody to have them available. Uh, sometimes it's hard finding um, good resources to be able to share with people. Um, and so we've got a couple of resources especially geared towards kids. Uh, one is the gospel story uh, where it goes through and it walks, it's a children's uh, colorful book that walks through a number of kind of the, the classic kind of Bible events of the flood and Daniel in the lion's den and Jesus walking on water and these different incredible events um, and points it all to Jesus. It shows how Jesus has always been God's plan to save us. And we've also got a, a devotional book back there, uh, The Wild uh, Words of Sport. Uh, it's some, some nice, simple kind of little devotions, almost like a Portals of Prayer style devotion, uh, except they all use a lot of uh, sports imagery and sports metaphors, which the scripture does use a whole lot of sports language. Um, and also sometimes it's hard to find good, clean jokes and so there's a nice, uh, good, clean uh, joke book uh, back there. Um, that's to be able to have some good, clean knock-knock jokes and some good, clean, fun jokes to be able to share, uh, share with the family and to join together and, and to be able to share some laughs and to be able to enjoy the joy of being a Christian. Uh, so they're all for free, uh, available uh, on the table to the right. Feel free to grab them and feel free to share them uh, with family, neighbors, and friends as we be able to get God's word out and to be able to equip ourselves and to equip others with God's word. Uh, also then, um, usually around this time of the year, uh, then we have our used a bit sale, which then we have a big plant sale outside our uh, people are able to get plants for their spring plantings. Uh, since the used a bit sale has been postponed until September, uh, we realized that a lot of people still probably wanted their plantings um, and the plants. Um, and so with the plants are available. Uh, they're outside, um, just outside to the left by the ramp. Uh, and so Phyllis will be out there uh, with them too, that if you're looking for those spring plantings, they are still available, uh, even though um, the used a bit sale has been postponed. Uh, and then um, any uh, funds raised from that then will go towards our uh, National Youth Gathering Fund as we've got the next youth gathering coming up in just over a year. Also, uh, then the, the final thing to be able to highlight uh, is just to be able to, there will be a lot more information in today's uh, email update, um, but basically the, the short version is the education hour is coming back. Uh, we're going to be able to gather together for in-person Bible study um, on Sunday mornings. Uh, we're still going to be able to have worship and Bible study uh, live stream to YouTube, um, but we're bringing back our education hour uh, on Sunday mornings um, for adult Bible study. We've had youth group and we've had Sunday school for kids as well, but we're bringing back in-person adult Bible study. Um, and there's also a number of changes coming up in the, in the coming weeks uh, with uh, social distancing uh, guidelines being lifted. Um, and then in like another month or so after that, it looks like a uh, mask uh, a mandate will be lifted. Uh, so in today's uh, email update, I'm also going to uh, uh, include kind of like a survey uh, with a few questions uh, to be able to ask you. Uh, so we invite you to be able to respond back to those uh, questions so that we can be able to kind of make some decisions moving forward. Um, we're seeing how we want to be able to continue moving forward. We found a number of different ways to be able to do ministry uh, over the course of this last year. So how can we keep moving forward together? Uh, so watch for today's email update. I'll include and kind of explain a lot of the details. Um, and then there'll be a survey there for you to offer your feedback as well. As we gather together uh, for prayer, uh, we have the wonderful chance to be able to speak with our God. Our God is the one who overcomes. He is the one who is faithful, and he is the one who hears our prayers 
and is there for us every single day. So we've got a number of prayer requests printed for us here in the bulletin. Uh, in the, in our, included in our prayers, uh, we also remember and honor uh, Mother's Day today as well. Uh, and remember uh, the many women, uh, both within our church family and uh, around the world, uh, who wear that hat of mother, uh, who serve in that way. Um, you know, also including all uh, grandmas and aunts and single dads and stepmoms and foster moms. And there's so many ladies who wear that, that mother hat. Uh, we remember and we honor them in our prayers today. Also then, uh, in our prayers, uh, we've got our, uh, another monthly update uh, about the ministry uh, through the uh, Lowe family. Uh, the update then is uh, printed again over on the bulletin board by the Fellowship Hall uh, and available online as well. Uh, but the, you know, the nutshell uh, talking about uh, Pastor Lowe's travels around the U.S. here stateside over in Colorado. Uh, we're excited to have you actually back with us today. Um, before now, Pastor Lowe will be taking off and heading down to Texas and being able to share God's word down there. Um, also included in the update is uh, information about a uh, neat project uh, going on uh, over in uh, Vietnam, being able to uh, provide a water supply uh, to a village, uh, being able to tangibly uh, show our faith and to be able to help out uh, a village very much in need of good water. Also then we rejoice and we thank with God that uh, through our mission churches uh, and partner churches over in Southeast Asia, uh, that in the month of April alone, uh, 228 uh, people uh, came to a saving faith in Jesus Christ, and 39 were baptized. Uh, so we thank and we praise God for uh, his work, um, the spreading of his good news uh, throughout the people of Southeast Asia. Are there any other ways we can be joining in prayer this morning? Joe. Uh, pray prayers of uh, comfort and, uh, and peace for the, the family of Joe, uh, your brother-in-law's family, um, as, as Joe had uh, recently tragically ended his life, and uh, prayers of comfort and, and encouragement and peace to be uh, with his wife and children and family and um, all those left behind that they may hold on to God's promises in a, in a very overwhelming situation. Certainly. Dave Welke. Pray, prayers for Dave Welke. Um, as Dave's been uh, taken into the hospital and not feeling well and his legs not working well and pain and, and so prayers for the doctors and nurses and everybody to figure out what's going on um, and for uh, encouragement to be with his wife Jean. Um, and all their family, and for healing to be with Dave's body um, in the coming days, weeks, and months. I'll end each of the parts, each of the petitions of our prayer today with, Lord, you have the power to overcome everything. And I invite you to respond with, hear our prayer. Lord, you have the power to overcome everything. Hear our prayer. I invite you to stand as we join our hearts and our voices in prayer. <clears throat> Gracious God, we thank and we praise you that you are the God of our lives. You are the God who is faithful, and you are the God who is never overwhelmed. Lord, we thank and we praise you for those opportunities to have joy and to be able to have fun in this life. We especially praise you for the milestones of your grace within our own church family in the coming week, with the birthdays and anniversary. We pray especially for Ariana, Cindy, Josh, and Dennis and Linda. Lord, you have the power to overcome everything. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we thank and we praise you that 
you are faithful, that you are right by our side, and that there's nothing in all creation that can separate us from your love. So, Lord, we come to you for comfort, healing, recovery, and the physical strength only you can provide. We pray this day especially for the family of Joe, Dave, George, Brenda, Seal, Kay, Pat, Donna, Evan, Anna, Nancy, Sarah, Riley, Alex, Donna, June, the Nelson family, Barb, Eric, Marilyn, Julie, Nancy, Dean, Kathy, Shannon, Abigail, Ronan, Kathy, the Fitzhugh family, and Thomas. Lord, you have the power to overcome everything. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we thank and we praise you for the many ways that you share your grace, that you share your love with us. We thank you for the gift of mothers, for all those who wear this hat of motherhood and who care for us in our lives. We honor and we thank you for them and for their service of caring for us, guiding us, and loving us throughout all of life's ups and downs. Lord, be with all of our mothers and bless them and their efforts as they serve those around them. Lord, you have the power to overcome everything. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we thank and we praise you that you are faithful in the midst of the struggles we face. There are so many addictions of this world which sometimes simply overwhelm us. And in these overwhelming struggles and pains, we come to you as the overcomer. We come to you for healing, forgiveness, strength, and direction forward in life. Lord, you have overcome everything. Hear our, Hear our prayer. Gracious God, as you share your incredible and perfect plan for us and our lives, you give us the joy of being able to share that plan with others, uh, that your beautiful plan gives us meaning, hope, and purpose in life. Lord, be with all those in our lives who have fallen away from you and your church. Open up their hearts and their minds as we share with them the love you have shown us. We thank and we praise you for all those who make sacrifices of their own time, money, and energy as they, through the many incredible wonders of technology, are able to share your good news around the world. We pray especially for Pastor Lowe, Kalia, Mercy, and Amy. Lord, you have the power to overcome everything. Hear our prayer. Lord, you are the God of all the nations, and you are the one who has blessed us with this wonderful land to live in. Lord, in the midst of the struggles we face, in the midst of what sometimes may seem overwhelming odds, you are king. You are faithful, and you know exactly what you are doing. So be with all the leaders of our land at the local, state, and federal level. Help them to use their positions as servants, to serve those who are in need, and to care for the welfare of all those in this wonderful land. We also pray for all those who oftentimes put their own health and safety at risk, for all those in our law enforcement, medical fields, for all those who serve in uh, skilled care facilities, who work as firefighters, who serve in our armed forces both here at home and abroad. Thank you for their service of caring for others, and please keep them safe so that they may return safely back to their loved ones again. Lord. You have the power to overcome everything. Hear our prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive the blessing of our God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. As we join in singing our final song, Go, My Children, with my blessing, I remind any kids in the congregation that you can come on out with me as we get ready to hand flowers out to the ladies of our church family. We join in singing our final song. <laughs>